Good evening. I would like to call the March 13th, 2019 Board of Education meeting to order. At this time, Dwan Kraft will lead us in the invocation. Thank you. Recently, two of our family, school family members, Kevin Goins and Teresa Sorio, lost their fathers. On behalf of the board and the Currituck County School System, I want to offer our condolences. I want to share a short passage because maybe this might be a little bit of what advice Kevin and Teresa's dads might have offered to us if they were here. If you sat down to write a letter that would be opened after you're gone, what would you write about? How about, nothing is known positively and completely, keep searching. The world is full of things to do over and sort out. Practice makes perfect. Every government could be better, vote. The best picture has not yet been painted, paint it. The greatest novel has not yet been written, write it. The most inspirational music is yet to come, listen. The study of space is in its infancy, imagine. Only 2% of all knowledge is known, study. The greatest sports records have yet to be broken, dream. Live each day as if it were your last, do it now. The regrets you'll have when you die are not regarding the things you did, but the things you wish you had done. Leave no regrets. I would conclude my letter by confessing that atoms never made much sense to me. The thought of my body being composed of tiny particles spinning in space is too abstract for me to comprehend. What I do understand is that through the makeup of cells, chromosomes, and genes, somehow all these atoms have combined into distinct forms to make every human being completely unique. That means each of us is here for a specific purpose. We each have most definitely, we each would most definitely be lousy as someone else, yet we are awesome as the person each of us is meant to be. When our time on earth is through, no one else will ever fit the space left behind by the removal of each of our jigsaw puzzle piece selves. Think about your protons, your neutrons, and your electrons spinning around in space with the rest of us. You, and only you, have the God-given right and ability to make something of them. You are so extremely unique. What will it be? Let's have a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we have our school spotlight. We have Principal Angel Lasher from W.T. Griggs Elementary School. Good evening. Um, first, I'd like to ask Felisa Janish to come up. She is a third grade student in Ms. Corletto's homeroom, and she's going to lead us in the pledge. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, Chairman Etheridge, Mr. Stefanik, and members of the board. Um, we are super excited to be here today. I'm going to um, introduce Miss Ann Corletto, who is a third grade teacher at our school. She's been with us for three years? Yes, three years now. So last year I said to her, um, asked her if she wanted to go to NC Ties, and she joked because her daughter said, I can't believe they asked you to go to that. You don't <laughs> do anything tech or no tech, right? So she goes, she had a great time, and she came back this year, and she started a coding club with some of our third grade students. It's completely optional and by choice, but they stay after school on Wednesdays. Um, I will say she just got back from NC Ties um, and is excited to we're going to have a coding night for parents in April that they can come out to and um, are already sharing some stuff that we can do with our staff. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Miss Corletto and our third grade students, and they're going to share with you what they've been learning in coding club. Okay, um, I'm Ann Corletto, and like Miss Lasher said, um, when I went to NC Ties, it was funny because she asked me to go to this workshop, and I'm like, sure. sure. And I couldn't log in, so I called my daughter, and I'm like, can you do this thing for me? She calls me back, it's technology. <laughs> Why are they sending you? <laughs> so when I went, um, besides learning very much, I just learned how I was doing my kids a disservice. You know, they just were not, I was looking at what kindergartens were doing. And I thought, wow. So I came back with a couple things, and, and I tried them, but coding seemed to be the one where, 
I didn't really need to know a whole lot. I just kind of needed to know where to get started, you know. So I went to two coding workshops in the summertime. They had them out in the Raleigh area just to kind of familiarize myself how to get started. So I just went on, I started at code.org and I did it myself in the summer. And it's supposed to be an hour. It took me about two and a half weeks, you know, because <laughs> I was like, why won't they turn, you know. So it's a little bit more to it, but it's fun. But my favorite part I loved about it is I, with, of course, not these children, but when they get on a computer, it's always, what next? What next? It's like, just hit a key. It's not going to blow up, you know, and they just don't want to. And so I found with coding, when we started it, we introduced it with the frustration persistent lessons. And it's all about, yeah, you're going to get frustrated, but you have to keep trying. And I promise you, it does work. Yes, it does work. Just like when they put in their password, it doesn't work. Yes, it does. You just typed it in. No, I didn't. You know, and over and over, they just don't want to try. So with this, we found that they just, they really, you know, they try. But it's great because besides political science or computer science is teaching them, it's really teaching them problem solving, you know, which is a skill a lot of them don't have. And critical thinking, it's like they really have to think outside the box, you know. And also, it gives them determination, but they get to succeed at their own pace, their own way, and at their own time. You know, so they're not on a time limit, and, and they get to use your own creativity. So, like I said, we do it a little bit in the classroom, um, and, but we do have our little club. We have 12 of us that stay after school, and then Eddie's going to come up and show you one that he did. Um, what we're doing right now is we do what we call Scratch. We started off at Code.org, and now we do Scratch, and they're, doing, um, they're creating stories. And so Eddie's going to show you his because the one he did we just finished our history unit, and um, it was the five themes of geography. And so the kids had to do a PowerPoint and then write a, a little piece on it. And so Eddie decided to do a scratch, is what it's called, instead of a PowerPoint. So he picked New York, and he had to tell you a little bit. So he's going to come up and show you what he did with New York. And then you're welcome to ask these guys any questions that you would like. So come on, Eddie. Okay, go ahead, Eddie. <laughs> Basically, he built this. Go ahead and show it. He built this with, I don't know what you can see. <laughs> uh, they're flocks, code strip blocks, and he pulls them over whether he wants them to move. If he wants them to talk. Um, oh, so okay. he picked a background and he has a dialogue. Because obviously we can't ask a question if nobody's going to answer it. So he basically, he has, he took some people and they're on a little bus and they're going through New York. And he's saying, do you remember what they said? So he picked out three things about New York. How many people? Uh, there were three people in one bus. But how many people live in New York? Um, over six million. And then what else about New York was on there? New York has the Museum of Natural History. Mm -hmm. And then what else? That statue. It has the Statue of Liberty on the water. I, I made them each say my three facts. And then when the bus went down, it picked them up. And he just, he times it so he can get it to move, pick up the people, and then the dialogue, he sets it up so they talk at the right time. I like to talk at the same time. <laughs> His actually talk. In intermittent, intermittent time, so you can pick the time frame. But. That's really awesome. Very good. Great job. job. Shannon, um, I'm 
Um, I like coding because it's all about having fun and being persistent, trying, trying, trying again. And, well, it's all about, well, putting things together and, well, sharing what you like. And I'm going to, um, if I can remember my password and username. <laughs> Hi, my name is Paige, and I like Coding Club because I like to do programs on computers. Thank you. My name is Brooks, and I like the Coding Club because coding is like... You try to figure out a problem, and when you try to figure it out, you have to try and try again. Mm -hmm. And when you finally get there, you can start creating your stuff you do. Very good, yes. My name's Felisa, and I like Coding Club because it's fun to try to put things together. Good job. I like coding because it's fun and it's sort of like creating your own little video game and your your own little world. That's right. Okay. If I may ask, would would each one of you come back up to the microphone and state your full name and your grade and your where you are in the school system? Like, what'd you say? Second grade? Second grade? Third grade. third grade, okay. My name is Paige Marie Johnson, and I am in third grade. And I am in Griggs Elementary School. Good job. I'm Shannon Elise Mikulski. I am in third grade, and I go to Dr. Walt W.T. Griggs Elementary School. <laughs> Very good, <laughs> Shannon. <laughs> My name is Felisa Lee Janish, and I go to, I'm in third grade, and I go to Griggs Elementary School. Very good. I'm Brooks Clem Sink, and I go in. I'm in third grade, and I go to Griggs Elementary School. Great, Brooks. My name is My name is Eddie Joseph Matteo, and I go to Griggs Elementary School, and I'm in third grade. Great job. Great job. Oh. very much. I know we're very proud of you and continue to, to do great things. We're glad you're a student in Currituck County. Next we have Valerie Person that's going to come <clears throat> forward and recognize our National Board Certified Teachers. Good evening, Board. Good evening. I want to give you just a real brief overview of what National Board certification with the renewal process looks like. And Christy Hodges, who's our in charge of our candidate support program here in Curry Tuck County Schools asked me to fill in for her um, as I've worked with the renewal candidates specifically. What it is, basically you can do it when you, after you achieve your original certification, you can go in year eight or nine to renew your national boards. Um, you have to do it before your original license expires. The purpose of doing the renewal is to um, make sure that National Board Certified Teachers are continuing to meet those expectations, those standards, 
um, and keep up, up to date on both content and pedagogy. It involves paying $1,250 um, by the individual candidates. Some, as far as hours that go toward it, um, some MBCTs report 30 to 40 hours at a minimum. I've heard as high as 60 plus hours on it. So basically what it involves is, and we have a lot of acronyms in National Board Certification, but you put together a portfolio, what's called a Portfolio of Professional Growth, or PPG, and it has three parts. Um, and they're based on professional growth experiences. So you, as a candidate, you identify areas of need uh, where you have focused in your, in your individual classroom, in your school, in your district, and how you have evolved since the original license in that 10 years. They want to see you continue to grow. So you do that in your first component, and then the second component is video-based. You take one of those four PGEs and you go in-depth. You have to be in your classroom working with your students. So if you have stepped into a new position, you have to borrow a classroom because you're maintaining the certificate in the, in the original <laughs> area that you re received it. Component three can be another video-based, working with your students or work samples or even with um, the, your, your colleagues in that kind of a situation. And then you have to write a reflection. Um, the five or the four PGEs, the whole profile or portfolio of personal growth has to be in alignment with what we know as the five core propositions for National Board. So every certificate area is aligned with these five standards. Unlike the original certification, when you submit your um, portfolio of professional growth, you're either passed or failed. There is no number. Why do you renew? Um, you renew because it signifies that you have preserved those, that original certification, that you continue to meet those standards. And you also, in North Carolina, were blessed to continue to receive the 12%. So you have to keep it renewed if you want to continue to receive that 12% in your salary. We have five teachers currently in Curry Tuck County Schools who successfully renewed. Uh, they learned this past October. These uh, MBCTs worked with readers and the candidate support program to successfully complete the process. We also work regionally and serve candidates in other EL LEAs because we know that our PLCs extend beyond district lines. And in fact, one of our five this year are, that we're going to honor tonight actually moved from another LEA. So they lost our game. Um, I'll introduce each one and give you just a brief thing of what their feedback as far as what national board renewal meant to them. When I call your name, if you'll come up here, and Superintendent Stefanik is going to give you your certificate. Anita Rubino is our first one. Um, early adolescence, young adult art. She's a teacher at Curtuck County High School. Anita said, I am not only continuing to hone my craft, but also modeling lifelong learning practices for students and colleagues. We wouldn't want a doctor who neglected to keep abreast of current research, technology, and methodology. And the same is true of educators. Renewal exemplifies the core beliefs of teaching. Jade Bennett. Um, renewed in early childhood, young adult, exceptional needs. She's a teacher at Curry Tuck County High School. Jade shared, I feel like the impact it has on my students' learning is that I can share with them my deeper understanding of my abilities while bringing my new learning to their learning, a real-life reason to go above what is required of a person and why it matters. In the setting I teach in, I am also trying to encourage and build up their love of learning. Having my national boards has given me that opportunity for students to be a true part of my learning while growing in their learning. Next we have Patty Coffey, and she is a middle childhood generalist. She teaches at Curry Tuck Middle School. Patty shares, I gained so much more insight from this process and my original certification than I ever did from achieving my master's degree. It requires deep reflection and honest evaluation of my teaching or of my daily practices. My students definitely benefit from my renewing. Not only do I follow best practices, but I am more deliberate in the choices that I make for each step of their learning process. I reflect upon each outcome and adjust accordingly. National Boards creates habits that are necessary for an effective learning process. Lynette Warden, who is not able to join us tonight, but she renewed in early adolescent science, and she is a teacher at Mayock Middle School. Um, 
We know that our MBCTs are involved actively in working with students outside the classroom as well as during the normal school day because learning is not limited to the four classroom walls. So as you would expect, Ms. Warden exemplifies that. She is um, actually at a cheerleading fundraising activity with her students as we speak. Kim Ballance, our gain this year, is a middle childhood generalist and she teaches at Mayuk Elementary School. Kim shares, in our profession, it is important to be a lifelong learner. I believe it is a core responsibility of the teaching profession. This professional development helped to improve my practice and demonstrate my dedication to my students' academic success. Recertification takes it above regular classroom teacher teaching. It creates teacher leaders in our learning communities. Although teacher leaders continue to work in their individual classrooms, it is important to have an impact way beyond those individual classrooms as well. So if you will join me in congratulating our new, newest uh, renewed NBCTs. <laughs> any questions that you would like to ask these? Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Congratulations. Yeah, of course. Congratulations. We only get paid once a month. All right, on three, ready? One, two, three. Let me do one more. One, two, three. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Tell the students they can go. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, at this time, if the students uh, want to be released, that's fine. We know you have school tomorrow, so we won't make it such a, night, a late night for y'all. Yeah, no, not you, Mr. Stefanik. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. night. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Bye, thank you. Bye, Bye. thank you. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, do I have a motion that we approve the agenda? Um, so, so moved. I like, Second. All right. Any I'd like discussion? To, yeah, I'd like to. Um, uh, I'd like to pull and table uh, item five mm -hmm. for further uh, discussion and review. Okay. It is five, isn't it? Five. Yep. <clears throat> All right, do you want to discuss that? Well, you pull it from the approval and then discuss it at next month's meeting? I'd, li I'd like to table it, pull it from today okay. and table it for further, um, like to look into it further and okay. have further discussion on it. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, <laughs> do I have so I guess you need a second to, to that? Well, he's got a motion, yeah. so. And, and we have a yeah. second. And I seconded it, so okay. now we need I, to. But that was my discussion, so. Mm -hmm. um, it's up to the chairman whether she wants to pull it out of the consent okay. agenda. Yeah, yes, sir. Okay, we will pull item five out of the consent agenda. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Any that do not approve? Motion carries. <clears throat> okay. Next, we have the public comment session. Uh, this time is when an individual or group can address the board about our schools. This is not a time to speak about issues or concerns involving identifiable, I'm sorry, identifiable personnel or students. Matters of this nature should be submitted in writing to the superintendent and your concerns will be addressed. Individuals or groups will be called in order in which they signed up and we will be asked to limit their remarks to three minutes. Uh, Ms. Jones, did we have anyone sign up tonight? Okay. All right. At this time, we have student board member reports. We have Keelan Hartman, Sydney McDonald, and Mallory Fields. Hello, board. So to start it off, we have Moyak Elementary. MES was honored to host civil service and local heroes as this year's guest readers for Read Across America Day on March 1st. 
That same day, we celebrated meeting our playground project fundraising goal at our school-wide assembly. Even Mr. Stefanik joined in on the fun by silly stringing the principal and assistant principal. <laughs> Be sure to check out our annual Wax Museum this Thursday, March 14th, as our second graders highlight all the research they've learned on historical figures. Hashtag learn, play, dream, grow. Next is Jarvisburg Elementary. JES has been happening has been a happening place with more to look forward to in March. Next week, JES will host its Title I Reading Night on March 21st from 5:30 to 7:30. It is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory themed, and guests will have the opportunity to visit book-themed rooms to learn more about literacy. A chocolate fountain will be on hand to help us celebrate everything Charlie. The book fair will also be in town next week. JES has talent. Our annual talent show will take place on Thursday, March 28th. Come and see the stars of tomorrow live on our stage. It will be lots of fun. K-5 through students will be traveling to Griggs to watch the Silver Trout Artist perform on March 21st. Our annual Lunch and Learn will happen on March 25th and 26th which gives parents the opportunity to join their student for a lesson in the classroom and then have lunch with them afterwards. Come on out and see what JES is all about. And is Central Elementary? Central Elementary Eagles have had lots to look forward to in the month of March. On, mon on March 14th, starting at 5.30, we are hosting a Mad Science Night as families will have dinner a performance by Mad Science of ha Hampton Roads, as well as hands-on science activities. It is sure to be an amazing night for the whole family. On March 19th, our Eagles will, will be participating in the district-wide Math 24 contest. On March 21st, we will celebrate our friends who have three of their 21st chromosomes on 321 by wearing our crazy socks and remembering that it is cool to be different. On March 22nd, the Ables will be performing for our students at CES. And on March 23rd, CES Music and Arts students will be participating in the district-wide Spring into the Arts event. Come visit us at Central or follow us on Twitter at CES Currituck. And then we have Shawboro Elementary. Give me an F. F. Give me an N. You. Er, <laughs> Uh, see, spelling is a ver is very Pretty hard. Cool. It's very hard. Okay, so give me a U. U. Now give me an N. N. What's that spell? Fun. fun. The Shawboro <laughs> Elementary Second Annual Mustang Fun Run was a <laughs> was a huge success. Thank you to all of the the family and friends of our students who sponsored student laps. Shaborough Elementary has a new Twitter hashtag. Find us at hashtag SES Mustang Pride. We are in the midst of our Read Across America Spirit Week. And tomorrow night on March 14th, we will host our Title I Fairy Tale Night beginning at 6. Join us for a night of mystical takes and enchanting performances as you rove between fairy tale lands. And that's all from me. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, Keelan. I will start with Griggs Elementary. March is a busy month with lots of fun activities for our Mallards. March 1st was Read Across America. Students spent the week wearing crazy socks, hats, animal print, and pajamas in honor of Dr. Seuss. March 7th was our PBIS Reward Day. March 8th was Spring Picture Day. Griggs was lucky to be chosen as one of the schools to participate in Duke Energy Science Night. This STEM event will take place Thursday, March 14th from 5.30 to 7.30 with din dinner being provided by the PTO. March 21st, we will have special concerts for K-2 through and 3-5 through by Timmy and Susan Abel. They will also have an evening parent concert at 6 at GES. March 22nd is Jump Rope for Heart. Next, I will move on to Knott's Island Elementary. Knott's Island started March off with a fun day of literacy and STEM. Staff and students celebrated Dr. Seuss's birthday with STEM activities based on Dr. Seuss's books. A school-wide <coughs> reading buddy time and covering Miss Gorza with Silly String for reaching our Read Across America Rainbow reading goal. The fun was carried on into the evening with our Title I Fractured Fairy Tale STEM Night. 
The learning continues with Math 24 on Tuesday, March 19th. Everyone is encouraged to look their best on March 20th for the spring pictures. Come see what the students have been working on in PE on Friday, March 22nd from 6 to 8 at the PE Showcase. The KI Cabin Fever Bazaar is taking place on Saturday, March 30th from 10 to 2. We hope to see you there. You can keep us keep up with us and the great things Knott's Island Entr Elementary School will be doing by following us on Twitter at KIES Wood Ducks, hashtag small school big learning. Next, I'll be moving on to Curry Tuck County Middle School. Our course and band students went to MPAs this past week and did our schools proud. Our course students earned a superior rating in sight reading and an excellent rating in performance. Band students earned a superior rating in both sight reading and performance. Our Science Olympiad team was very successful, placing in three events in the recent Greenville competition. Our most recent Career Cafe moment took place this week when Kaylee Burns, owner of Peaceful Waters Counseling and Wellness Center, came to talk to our students about the counseling career pathway. Another cafe moment is scheduled next week with the Currysett County Sheriff's Department. These are casual lunches where the students can talk with professionals from around the county about their jobs and the pathways to get there. CCMS sixth grade students are going on a grade level field trip visiting the Chrysler Museum of Art tomorrow, March 14th. Raider Roundtable Club is sponsoring a Kindness and Positivity Spirit Week the week of March 18th through the 22nd. CCMS is hosting the county's annual Spring into the Arts Festival on Saturday, March 23rd. The library is having a book madness contest this month, which much in the style of March Madness. The top 16 circulated books in the Media Center are in the Sweet 16 bracket, and the students and staff are voting this week to see which books make it to the Elite Eight. Then we'll vote for the final four and the championship round. This has really got kids excited about reading. Today kicks off our spring sports schedule with the home games for softball and baseball. I will now pass it on to Mallory. Hello. Okay, so from Moyoc Middle School, we had 10 students compete at the math competition at Elizabeth City State University. MMS students came in first, second, and third place for each event. As a team, we qualified for first place. <laughs> Three students will be going to the state competition in May. The CTE department and Haley Bartolata began hosting career cafe moments during student lunches. Each week there is a featured community member who comes to educate the students on their career. Beta Club inducted 34 new members. Mrs. Stephanie Carroll and Mrs. Pam White organized a lovely ceremony and reception for students. The Science Olympiad team competed and took fourth place overall. We will be going to states to compete over spring break. Math 24 students will be trained as proctors and will serve as such for the district competition on the 19th at the Extension Center. It has been a busy month for our FFA chapter. They travel to Greensboro to compete in the state competition. Band went to MPA and earned an overall excellent, excellent rating for their participation. We are very proud of Miss Sarah Levin, our new band director, and all her accomplishments this year. Finally, FBLA will be traveling along with JP Knapp students to the state leadership competition conference in Greensboro at the end of March. Now for JP Knapp. JP Knapp hosted its first annual Almost Adulting Forum for students in, graves, mm -hmm. in grades 12 to 13 on Friday, March 1st. The event was a huge success. Special thanks to the staff and special community guests for their time and efforts. Eighth grade student interviews are underway at both middle schools for students that have applied to JP Knapp. Interviews wrap up on March 14th. March 15th is a work day. Report cards will be distributed on March 20th, and parent conferences will be scheduled for at-risk students on March 26th from 4 to 6. COA registration begins on March 21st for the 2019-2020 school year. Mrs. Boone has been meeting with individual students to review four- to five-year plans and administering AccuPlacer testing in preparation. And finally, for Currituck County High School, the Knights enjoyed welcoming their rising ninth graders to its annual, annual freshman course fair and also offered juniors a college application and financial aid workshop last week. Course registration at CCHS commences this month, which will ultimately guide the development of our master schedule for 2019-2020. We are so proud of junior Laura Griffin, who was recently accepted to attend the Governor's School for Math at Meredith College this summer. She is the daughter of, of our math department chair, Robert Griffin. Mr. Brendan Rawls has been tapped to teach our first research course in the AP Capstone program beginning this fall. This summer, he is slated to attend specialized training in Baltimore. 
Spring sports are well underway, and we are hoping that with drier and warmer conditions, we will be able to follow our events calendars and establish our event calendars established earlier this year. As you can imagine, lots of makeup events are already on the docket. That's it. Thank you very much. All right, this time we have uh, <coughs> Super Superintendent Stefanik that will give us our informational items. Thank you, Ms. Etheridge. Fellow board members, um, you can see all of the uh, activities that are happening in the next uh, month or so, uh, but one thing uh, I'll continue to highlight, um, check out all the different uh, cities uh, that we're visiting uh, with our activity buses. Uh, we'll, we'll keep uh, saying that to say that our buses are pretty much everywhere, uh, and uh, we'll see if we can't uh, get our uh, uh, Currituck advertising proposal off the ground uh, with, our, uh, with our field trip buses. So, uh, but again, we're up, up to Washington, D.C. and all throughout the state of uh, North Carolina in the next month or so. Okay. And I want to highlight from the kids, or from the kids, student board member. And I'm so old, everybody's a kid to me. So, um, but uh, uh, everybody was wondering about, you know, Keelan not uh, spelling fun uh, correctly. Uh, but if you noticed, Sydney and Mallory didn't follow directions because he asked for an N, uh, and, 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 and he got a U. So we got we got to highlight that too. Uh, it doesn't really matter whether the word was spelled right. He said, "Give me a, a letter," and they gave him a different letter. So you got to you got to make sure you're listening to directions all all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, concerning our consent agenda, do I have a motion that we approve the consent agenda? So moved, and I'd like to remind the board that we did remove item five. Okay. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Consent agenda is approved. We have a work session that was scheduled for April 10th. We're going to move that to April 1st. Um, one of the board members has a conflict with the 10th date, so we are going to change that to April 1st. And the location at this point is to be determined. Okay. Board member comments. I'd like to start with Mr. Crotick. Okay. Um, well, I'd like to, uh, uh, well, just say that uh, we've been going around and uh, visiting uh, schools. Uh, today uh, we visited um, uh, Moyak Elementary and uh, um, Moyak Middle School and um, there was a lot of really uh, positive things going on there I'm real happy to see what's going on but we're also uh, trying to uh, monitor uh, uh, growth in the county and get a, a real feel for uh, capacity and so that's part of what we're doing um, in hopes that um, we have a um, pretty good plan that when uh, population increases and needs are um, put upon us and the school system that we're able to uh, have a, um, a valid plan and not a reaction. Um, also, um, I personally went around to Knott's Island and I mess, met uh, our new uh, fourth grade teacher, Miss Earhart, and I was uh, really happy to see her and uh, see all the other teachers and students and had a lot of really uh, positive feedback from the teachers and staff that uh, she was there um, and I'd like to remind everybody that we are trying to work on um, things like uh, transportation in fact um, um, Bobby Hannig has um, uh, our legislator uh, new uh, Congress representative uh, he has proposed <laughs> some legislation trying to get waivers um, so if you're um, able to uh, you could let um, your legislators and other legislators around the state know that we are trying to support uh, House Bill uh, 96 and 97 and so one of them is for uh, the waiver or rewording of the bus efficiency model that has a I believe a negative uh, impact on our ability to provide uh, better transportation and the other one is to recognize that Knott's Island is a isolated school in hopes that uh, we'll be able to provide more services without um, having to spend as much local dollars in hopes that they will recognize that it is isolated and that when they put the ferry in service in the 60s, uh, that act uh, 
in itself demonstrated that they recognize it as being isolated. Um, anyhow, um, I hope um, everybody's having a great year, and um, God bless Kerr Tuck County, and thank you. Thank you. Ms. Rose? I, too, would like to give a shout-out to Bobby Hannig with the support that he has given education, especially in Air County. I uh, want to thank him. House Bill 96 pertains to isolated schools, and 97 pertains to the efficiency rating with transportation. If these bills pass, it will mean more dollars for our air school system. He's also in support of House Bill 19, which would give additional construction on a COA campus, uh, would add another building. Which, speaking of COA, I don't know if you've missed one of our student board members, but Colin Coffey, who is like at every single board meeting, has missed the last one and this one because he's got a class, I believe, at COA. And, yes, um, he does. He, he hates missing, but we certainly understand and we applaud him for going on and getting a jump start on that college degree. I also want to give a shout out to our teacher assistants and teachers and other faculty and staff members who dig into their pockets to buy those items from Dollar Tree and Walmart, supplies that they need for a lesson or whether it's an experiment or a math lesson or a craft to extend a language arts lesson, shout out to them. I appreciate all of you. Thank you, Ms. Rose. Dr. Dobney? Yes, I'd just like to uh, mention that I attended the recent hunter safety event that we had uh, at the high school, and we'd just like to tell everybody we're the last public school in North Carolina that has their hunter safety program on the school campus. And sponsor Daniel Meads does a fantastic job yes. with the kids. Yes, he does. I also attended the Jarvisburg Wax Museum, and... Next, I had a community member who had been a board member in another state uh, came up to me, and he said, you know, I would just like to tell you, and he helped set up for uh, Jonathan Walker's memorial. He said, you have a bunch of very helpful custodians at Craytuck Middle School, and they did a great job. And he said, even after they were done you know, helping, they would come up to me and said, is there anything else I can do to help you? So I'd just like to give a shout out to the custodians there that helped set up. And lastly, I'd just like to thank Keelan, Sydney, and Mallory. It's amazing. They're, none of them are, you know, they give their opinions, mm -hmm. which is, you know, very refreshing. Uh, you know, you got to be very proud of yourselves. Yeah. And you all did a great job today. So, Absolutely. Anyway. Be proud of yourself. Thank you. Ms. Kraft. Yes. Um, I want to first congratulate our National Board teachers um, who recertified. I, uh, as a former National Board teacher, I know the dedication that they had to put in to do that. So I just want to congratulate them and thank them for those efforts. I read at Moyock Elementary School in Jarvisburg this uh, month. I also went and met our new teacher at Knott's Island. Um, she's excited to be here, and we're excited to have her. Uh, I attended the Wax Museum, even Channel 13 featured them, so they, they did an amazing job as usual. I visited Central Elementary School and Curry Tuck County High School, and then uh, also today we toured Moyock Elementary School and Moyock Middle School, so um, I just um, ask you to hang on that Easter break's coming. <laughs> <It's> coming. <laughs> That's right. Thank you. Yes, today we did tour a Moyock Elementary and Moyock Middle <coughs> School and got to see what's what's happening at those two schools. Uh, Superintendent Stefanik and I were able to travel to the big city, to Raleigh, and uh, with the state superintendent, Mark Johnson, and his vision for North Carolina education is that four-year-olds engage in high-quality kindergarten readiness programs, fourth graders reading on grade level, students on track to their chosen fulfilling career after high school and recruits to education professions and educators remaining in the field so he's going to be working in a positive direction for all of the citizens of north carolina uh, i was able to attend the welcoming ceremony for 
the teachers and staff for the uh, development, staff development at the middle school. It was George Curis. He's a leading educator in the area of innovative leadership, teaching, and learning. He's worked with all levels of school from K-12 as a teacher, technology facilitator, and school and district administrator. And he's the author of the book, The Innovator's Mindset, Empower Learning, Unleash Talent, and Lead a Culture of Creativity. He is a sought-after speaker on the topic of innovative student learning and engagement and has worked with schools and organizations around the globe. <coughs> and I have heard nothing but positive feedback from um, the breakout sessions that they had at the middle school. And so we were very happy to, to have him. Uh, Mr. Stefanik, you have the last word tonight. Any comments? Wow. <laughs> Keep it short. <laughs> I, I, I will keep it short. Um, uh, I'll echo the uh, um, uh, all the congratulatory comments, but uh, focus on uh, um, uh, Mr. Kuros's visit uh, for professional development. Um, we were able to get a, uh, a grant um, for uh, um, it's 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 in the technology uh, field. Ms. Dowdy, what's the name of the grant? D digital learning initiative and we were able to use uh, funds for that to bring uh, mr. Kuros to the to the area to speak to our our folks but um, he expanded his message it wasn't just about technology uh, it's about you know uh, you know what you can do what kind of creativity you can bring uh, to whatever role you play uh, in the school district and uh, miss Etheridge is right the the outpouring of, of positive um, feedback from that session was uh, I'm not sure I've ever seen it uh, from uh, professional development uh, at that level uh, to the point that I recommended him as the feature speaker for the regional um, leadership conference that we hold every year at uh, in Kitty Hawk. Uh, the Regional Superintendents Association sponsors it, and so he's going to be the keynote speaker next November, uh, I believe, is our uh, conference down there. Uh, and he's going to come back and talk to the educational leaders from this entire region and, and possibly even the state uh, if they come over here. So we're going to try to keep that momentum going um, on our Twitter um, yeah, our Twitter feed or Twitter handle, Twitter, whatever it's called. What, what is our thing? Hashtag, <laughs> hashtag Kuratak K12. Um, you can see some of the, the comments that are out there and some of the ideas that have been shared uh, by educators across the, uh, um, the district. And we're going to try to keep the momentum going um, up to and including um, something he said at the secondary breakout. Um, uh, folks uh, were very uh, passionate about um, Superintendent uh, Johnson's uh, pledge to reduce testing um, and so far uh, again some of the uh, critics of him are saying that he keeps talking about reducing local testing and we need him to start reducing some of the state mandated testing um, but to that end got a standing ovation mr. Curls, when he talked about you know uh, there's a place for testing but too much testing is counterproductive and at the secondary session we started talking about online portfolios for students where students get to showcase um, the work that they're doing aligned to the standards and how that can take the place of benchmark assessments and and other types of local assessments and hopefully if you get a waiver, you can actually use those uh, uh, portfolios to uh, waiver out of some of the statewide assessments because they show what you can do uh, in, in some of the standard areas. So uh, we're going to pursue that um, a little bit further. Uh, he said it does not work unless you um, go all in you know as a district and so we have to uh, have conversations about how really does that start does it start in kindergarten does it start when standardized testing typically starts in third grade um, you know wh when does that portfolio start but it can't just be a high school thing it can't just be a middle school thing it has to tell the whole educational journey of the uh, of the children so um, we're, we're looking into that as a way to uh, extend his visit so it wasn't just a as we call it in education a one and done uh, we want to make sure that the district uh, changes and grows from that uh, that experience wonderful thank you <coughs> all right at this time do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting so moved second any discussion all in favor aye, aye. all opposed <laughs> meeting is adjourned thank you